it was going to be a horror film through a Jewish lens in terms of like the community we're in and the language and the mythology and the kind of all that stuff. But I wanted it to feel like a horror film and kind of have the sort of tropes that you might expect um, as, as kind of an easy entry into it. So for me, in some ways it was me thinking, okay, it's a chance to do like a Jewish exorcist and kind of, so a lot of the visual kind of style, it, it both came from me being influenced by certain things. You know, when you, there's some films you see at a certain age that just kind of lodge themselves in your brain. And for me, it was stuff like Angel Heart and it was stuff like Jacob's Ladder. And it was just a certain aesthetic and a feel and a look to those films that, that I wanted to replicate in some ways that I also thought would be true to, oh yeah, this is a religious horror film. It just happens to be Jewish, but it's going to have that sort of atmosphere. Makes me this I feel us. We have to leave now. This is the most difficult performance I've ever had the pleasure of undertaking. It was a challenge um, as a character study and as a performance piece, and then it had the added difficulty of the multiple languages. Um, so there were many challenges on set and the physical challenges. But I think for me, the most difficult was the, uh, the emotional toll. It was finding the sorrow and the fear that Yaakov was living inside of, bringing it to the point of feeling like I was almost in personal danger of losing it and then attempting to keep myself at that point until Keith was ready to film the scene that I thought that emotion needed to be there for. And, and so as a result, you know, there were moments of great catharsis at, at yellings of cut and okay, I think we got it. It was like, okay, I can let go of that feeling for a little while. This is Litvak. There is something very, very wrong here. We have to go now. Sort of the demon at the center of this film is a, a real demon in the sense that it exists in um, uh, ancient Jewish writings. Um, and it's called a mazik, which means destroyer in Hebrew. Um, in the text uh, that I kind of dug up looking for the mazik and kind of figuring out what this thing would be. Um, it, all it says is that you should not go into abandoned houses because there could be a mazik in them and you don't want to run into one of those. Uh, there's no description of what it looked like. So when it came time to actually make the thing, it was important to me that it not just be your standard sort of boogeyman, just like some things, you know, with whatever standing in the shadows, that it had some sort of connection to the themes of the film. So for me, if, if a big part of the film was trauma and, and whether to let go of the past and how to move on, then this thing should be the embodiment of always looking backwards, of never looking forward, of never moving on. And so that became part of the design. And it was like, well, how do you make that physically? If, if you're always looking into the past, what would that physically look like? What would that do to a human body? Um, and so, you know, kind of that's how the design of the thing came about. And the other trick, of course, is with any horror film is, you know, how much do you show? What do you show? It's scarier, of course, when people are envisioning what the thing is and they're only getting glimpses of it. So it was, you know, both designing for the big reveal because uh, of course you have to show the thing eventually, um, but at the same time keeping it ambiguous and vague enough that it that the the audience could kind of write onto the thing in terms of their their own experience uh, in terms of what they think they're seeing. It was important to me for the film to feel you know cinematically like what I was going for in terms of the aesthetics of. I wanted a lot of dolly shots. I wanted steady cam. I, I wanted it to have that omniscient sort of that view. That, that that's very cinematic. And so that meant putting a dolly track down a street in Williamsburg in the community. So it meant having a real presence there. Um, and, you know, the community 
well, I think most of all, they were just really curious. It wasn't so much that they cared about the movie we we're making. It wasn't like they were offended, like, oh, this could be a Jewish horror film or whatever this was. It was more just like, why are you filming here? Like, what, 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 why are you here? Why are you bothering? It was 2.30 in the morning when we are filming a lot of it. And Dave could talk about uh, some of those scenes. Uh, and in terms of the house, uh, it was a real house. Uh, it was important to me. We talked about building a set and obviously you can float walls on the set and it's easier to move the camera around, but there's a certain kind of feel in a, in a house uh, that has a history where there's something baked into the walls. And that house that we filmed in wa- had belonged, it belonged to one of our executive producers who had bought it and rem- was going to remodel it. And we just luckily got in before, um, but it had belonged to an elderly Jewish woman who had died uh, at the house a few months before we moved into it. And so uh, there was something just there that you could feel and sense. It, it, it made it harder. It, we had to make build trolley tracks in you know, very tight spaces and we're all piled up on each other. But uh, it really added a lot of authenticity to it. You know, I, I'm definitely the type of person who, who considers himself a realist. And, you know, a friend might come to me and say, oh, yeah, there's a ghost in my house. And I'll go, okay, yeah, sure. Is there a ghost in your house? Or are you having some electrical problems or something like that? But I think the truth is that, you know, magical things happen all around us all the time. And I, I felt it necessary to invoke some of these magical creatures that exist in our world um, to get through the filming of this project, to, to make this film, you know, everything it could be. I, I, I felt it necessary to believe that. And so did it change me over time? I think so, because you can't invoke magic when you need it and then pretend it's not there when you don't need it. So um, the fact that, you know, anyone who was on that set will tell you there was a very special energy going around. And, you know, did we know that the vigil would turn into what it was gonna be? No, but I can tell you that when that many people get together with a common goal and everyone is focused and everyone feels the importance and the gravity of what we're trying to accomplish, you know that something's Spectacular is happening. The magic it will make you see terrible things. The magic will find another broken person. Behind.